welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Toboggan, this is Teamer Eris. This deck is built around the brand new, from Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander set, Eris Roar of the Storm. This list, at least in my understanding, the first person I saw playing it, posting a list with it, was Magic Online user Sylvia Wataru. That seems to be who I see people crediting the list to. Eris, 10 mana. 8, blue, red. Legendary, elemental, there's more stuff. Uh, Warlock. Okay, I was going to say warrior based on what I could see, but elemental warlock. I guess that makes sense because that makes it an outlaw. This spell costs 2 less to cast for each different mana value among instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. That means I need 4 different mana values to make this a 2 drop. Pretty good deal. 4-4 four, four, flying prowess. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, make a 4-4 red dragon elemental creature token with flying and prowess. That's a lot of stats for two mana, if we could get there. Another cool thing is your when a card specifies what number of a thing has happened in a turn, like second spell, whenever you draw your second card, like anything like that, that's not tied to the permanent that is referencing that. So Eris Roar of the Storm can be your first spell of the turn. And then you, the next spell you cast makes a 4-4. Four, four. Eris doesn't have to be in play to see both spells played. Just a small thing. Just could come up. Let's look at the spells in this deck. We've got 1 drops in Days and Brain, or Ponder and Brainstorm. 2 drops in Days and Unauthorized Exit. Unauthorized Exit also has Surveil on it. I can get some extra stuff in there. We got threes in the form of two force negation, fours in the form of two fire ices, fives in the form of force of will and Lorien revealed, and then six in the form of pyrokinesis. And since we're doing all this stuff with high mana values, up the beanstalk is here too. If I wasn't already in love, now I am. This is a pretty simple deck all in all. It's basically rug tempo, except instead of Delver of Secrets, we have up the beanstalk. And a bunch of weird ways to make Eris a playable card. This deck seems insanely soft to Rest in Peace or Leyline of the Void effects. Just got to be aware of those when I'm sideboarding and, and mapping out my matchups. Otherwise, we just kind of play a normal game of Magic and eventually stick this big O that's going to be really hard for anyone to beat. That's the plan. Let's get into it. This is Teamer Eris. I'm on the play in round one. Pyrokinesis and a red card immediately takes a lot of pressure off ways you could die. Days, I can lead on Thundering Falls. All right, yeah. I need an engine and a threat, but this hand is good enough. I'm going to lead on Thundering Falls. Beanstalk would be great to find. <laughs> Speak it into existence. There it is. Every time. Verdant Catacombs from the opponent. Could be a Storm deck. Could be a Depths deck. Could be Scam. All right. We'll see how hard I get scammed right now. I suspect they'll take days, just based on what's in my hand, but if they're going to reanimate the grief, they would have to take days to do that, and then they take the fire ice, leave me with pyrokinesis. They pitched Thoughtseize to the grief, which means they have plans for this black mana still this turn, or else they would have just cast Thoughtseize. A Swamp. Dark Ritual, uh-oh. Thoughtseize, okay. I imagine fire ice is going. Yep. And Orcish Bowmaster. That's actually super annoying because the top card of my deck I know is up the Beanstalk. But if Beanstalk draws a red card, I can clear this board right before the Orc Army gets out of reach. I would have strongly preferred to just get Grief Scammed there. Alright, come on, red card. My last chance. We did it. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it. One, two, three, four. Done. Pitch the DRC. Up the Beanstalk. Scam you right back. High octane magic to start this game. Okay. I mean, my hand is bricks, but that was a pretty insane follow-up to their insane start. That's the turn. We're back in it. 
Marsh Flats Pass. And I have three different costs in my graveyard already. There is one Surveil Land that I've already used. Just checking for that. I'm going to run the Wasteland out there. They already know about it. I don't have any reason to want to shuffle. They might be an opposition agent deck. If they do suddenly reveal a splash color, I'd like to beat it up. Like if they fetch Undercity Sewers in the end step, I want to be able to punish that. Okay, I'm not worried about Wasteland here. I have so many lands. I'm going to float green. And they just pass through that. That's a big one. Okay. How many lands? I have three of each dual, which means I can run out this tropical island. One, two, three, four, five. The Murktide would be large and draw a card. It would completely erase my graveyard. If I fetch, I can leave a... Or I can tap the Wasteland and leave something in there. Okay. Murktide. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to make it as big as I can. Never mind. It would be super embarrassing if this just got dismembered because I was trying to play around, play into Eris. A card that is not currently in front of me. Reanimating Grief. Have a look. What do you think? F6. Nothing left to hide. Nothing left to bluff. And they just passed to me. Unauthorized exit. All right, I can make Grief leave. Could also just save that to bounce my Murktide if they do draw an Edict. Or if they put a Troll or something scarier into play. I can bounce that. And no rush here to cast this card. And the race is on. Here comes Grief. I guess I'm not far off from Mystic Sanctuary. That's something that I wasn't considering when I was thinking about the size of my Murktide. We did it. Okay. Bounce Murktide. I'll have that back, please. Aeris Roar of the Storm. There he is. Uh, I am nowhere near ready for this card, and I would like to redeploy my Murktide, so I am just going to bin that. Oh, they had the grief, too. Okay. I mean, that's better than everything else that could have just happened. Like, I could have just lost Murktide. We got at least two cards out of that unauthorized exit, but now I do need some action. Deck's full of it. That's not it. Okay, held on opponent. I'm on a five turn clock, four if I fetch. Unauthorized exit is the only spell in my graveyard, but it does take the pressure off. Shadowy backstreet. Okay. I can punish that. They bin dark ritual. I think I do want the sanctuary and just clear this grief. This is damage that I just don't have to take. Bounce the Grief. Bonder stays on top of my deck, please. That is exactly what I'm looking for in this situation. And Wasteland, the back street. And might as well play out Scalding Tarn. Okay, they got Grief in their hand. Don't draw a Bowmaster right now, please. That's what I need from you. Bonder. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Come the fuck on. Outrageous. Okay. Whatever. There's that. Let's beat it. Pyrokinesis and Eris. Eris costs six right now. One, two, three, four, five. I'm actually one short of both Pyrokinesis and Eris. I gotta be careful with my sequencing here because they could discard whatever I put in my hand. Okay, I'm gonna put the Pyrokinesis in my hand and Eris under it. This way I can just cast Pyrokinesis for six mana next turn and stabilize the board. Or if they grief the Pyrokinesis, I can cast Eris for four. Uh, that Bowmaster was such a stupid-ass draw. Did they, is there just not a Swamp in their deck? I've already killed one of these things, too. That was a three-outer. I don't care about any other card that they play. Okay, Thought Seizing me. Takes the Kinesis. I'm drawing Eris, who now costs four. Eris does cantrip on the way through. My next card down, I believe, was a land. I don't want that. So I am going to fetch here, go to three. When I cast Eris, I go to two. Almost out of spells to play this game. But I'm making a run out of it. All right, there it is. I'd love to cantrip into just, like... Oh, wow, that's good. Okay, I don't get any more spells this game because I'm going to be at one. But this is multiple dragons right now. All right. <laughs> Let it ride. I go to one. I get a 4-4 four, four, and a Murktide. Lauren revealed. <laughs> Definitely not casting that one anytime soon. Okay. Uh, they are dead on board, though. They now have to solve this. Another Bowmaster wins them the game. But, I mean, they got a rip here. Can they rip Bowmaster twice on the two turns where they needed to do that in this game? Trying to a two-outer here. Okay, no attacks. 
which means they have to kill all three of these things. They all have flying, right? Yeah. All right. I can't cast this force because it kills me either by pitching and I lose a life or by beanstalk trigger. Wow. That was some crazy haymaker magic. Le back and forth, left and right. Okay, I want... I think I want Narsa just for the ability to dig. Brazen Borrower is another way to answer just some stupid permanent that's in play. Graftigger's Cage seems better than Surgical. It seems like they are kind of a mild scam deck, not a, a full turbo reanimator build. I guess they still could be. We saw Dark Ritual, which doesn't really give me a ton of information. I know they're not a blue rescaminator deck if they have Dark Ritual. There's something either more on the stompy spectrum or more on the combo spectrum than that, that middle of the road stuff. I guess I will bring in the Surgical on the draw, just give myself more plays. I should expect Dothy Voidwalker out of this opponent, which means that I should probably board out at least one Eris. Or some Negation's actually pretty bad against them. I'm not that hot on Force of Will either, but I think with the, the Bean Strat and everything that's going on with this deck, it is necessary. I could cut one, though, and still have some in there. Maybe I don't need an R set. I could just bring in this stuff that answers their permanence, not worry about my own card advantage so much, and then take out these kind of awkward clunkers. Yeah, I'll try it like this. Let's go. We did both run some pretty insane perfects back and forth that game after they tore my hand apart, just cantripping into the, the red card for Pyrokinesis, and then the last-ditch Bowmaster, and then me winning at one the turn after they Bowmastered me. That was a great game. On the draw for game two, of course, and I mean, my hand's full of cards. I'm going to keep it. Scam is not a matchup you want to take hyper-aggressive mulligans in. Like, there's sequences that punish me here. Okay, Leyland Avoid. We predicted that a little. Uh, brought in the Brazen Borrower, boarded out an Eris. Like, if they just Dark Ritual out a Opposition Agent on turn one, I have no recourse for that. I think I actually do want to play Dragon's Rage Channeler here. The only thing is, am I worried about Dark Ritual Oppo? Uh, not really, because I have Pyrokinesis, so yeah, not even worried about it. DGAF. Dragon's Rage Channeler. The powerful 1-1 one, one forever. Yeah, Leyline Effects called it out in the deck tech. Currently have two blanks in my hand because of that. And at least the Eris pitches to Pyrokinesis. If they play Bowmaster here, I'm just going to let it kill DRC. And then I'll play Beanstalk next turn and Pyrokinesis the Bowmaster in response to the Bean Trigger. Dark Ritual. Are we getting Helmed? Is that a gear this deck has? Well, Hardcast Grief. Disappointing. I think they have to take Beanstalk here, though. I'm not going to fire off Pyrokinesis just in case they take that, because that's not even what I'm really worried about. Yeah, every single threat in this deck cares about Leyline of the Void. Two of the cards are just blanks with Leyline in play, and then Dragon's Root Channeler is pretty bad. And there's two answers to that in the 75. Seems a little skinny, but okay. All right, so I can kill Grief and start attacking, or I could hold back this Pyrokinesis to kill two things in the future. I kind of like that holding back Pyrokinesis checks the next Bowmaster or the next Opposition Agent or the next Dothy Voidwalker, just whatever they might have. Unlicensed Earths. All right, well, you got it. I don't have a graveyard. Grief's attacking, and I'm going to fetch the Thundering Falls and start selecting. Don't need another Murktide Regent. That's gone. Another Dragon's Rage Channeler. This is still card selection, even if, if I'm not fueling the graveyard with it. Zoom, zoom, here we go. Another one of these. They'll probably start eating their own graveyard, so Unlicensed Hearse has stats in the future. Ooh, Force of Despair, look at you. Force of Despair, two for one to kill a Dragon's Rage Channeler. I think I'm going to Pyrokinesis the Grief in response to this, and I'll just get two surveils while I can. Force of Will, no thank you. Island, no thank you. Yeah, basically looking for one of my bounce spells or nothing or like a cantrip that can find one of the bounce spells. That was wild to go hellbent like that to beat a 1-1. One -one. They were still winning the race. I guess they're worried about the selection. In their next land, cast Force of Despair. Maybe they just don't think those cards are getting better and maybe they're right. They pitched a dark ritual to do that. Yeah, maybe that just isn't getting much better in their estimation. Stalactite Stalker, there you are. 
that does not crew the car. And I'm not going to cycle or in revealed because I have hopes of maybe having five mana one day. Not that I hope to have five mana one day, but it could happen. I would trade this off so happily if they take it. Did not take it. Smart. Frustrating, but smart. All right. I am going to cycle now that I've missed a land drop. Cycle Lorraine revealed. Just get a trop in. If I had just drawn and played a land naturally, I would have been one away from the Lorraine revealed and held onto it. But having all these resources, I mean, spending seven mana on Merktide Regent to make a 3 3 could someday be a thing. All right, deck. How about a Ponder or Brainstorm? We did it. We found a Ponder. I can even daze an Orcish Bowmaster if they drew one. Leave Brainstorm on top. Find me a bounce spell. We did it. Found a bounce spell. Okay. Um, now what? I can put Pyrokinesis directly into the graveyard, but Unlicensed Hearse is still a problem. Yeah, that's pretty awkward, actually. I, uh, with the Hearse backing it up, answering the ley line doesn't even do that much. I'm still keeping this unauthorized exit, though. Oh, I can surveil twice the DRC. Okay, I'm going to attack. I'm going to try to set up some end step situation where there's more cards in the graveyard than Hearst can enter, or like if they crew it, I can just take a bunch to get a Merktide into play. Land number three suddenly here. Oh, they just, oh that, that's to get the Slactite Stalker bigger. But then they didn't use it. Interesting. Okay. What are we doing with all this information now? Unauthorized exit, bounce lay line of the void. Surveil Pyrokinesis, draw Brainstorm, cast Brainstorm, Surveil, Fetch. Okay. I will make this move. The hearse is still a problem, but I've got moves here. Oh, I was supposed to let the exit resolve. Yeah, this one, fuck. All right. The ley line leaves play before you Surveil. I was supposed to decline this Surveil and then do this Surveil. Damn it. That might have messed up the whole thing. I mapped it out, forgetting that Dragon's Rage Channeler was also going to surveil, and then in my head I was like, oh, it's all the same. But it's literally not. Okay, right, let's see how antsy they get with the unlicensed hearse here. Okay, Brainstorm. This is all new cards. I wish there was a Pyrokinesis in my graveyard, but there's not. In Tropical Island, they could hearse right now. They didn't. Put back Graph Digger's Cage and Misty Rainforest. Fetch. They should hearse here. This is the spot. I hope they don't, but this is the spot. Opposition agent. All right, I can daze that, which gets another surveil. Scalding Tarn to the graveyard. Please don't hearse, but you should. Come on, Scalding Tarn, please resolve, please resolve, please resolve. Don't hearse me now. Oh, they found it. That was definitely correct to do. A tropical island. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they can crew this hearse, which is now bigger than everything in the entire universe. I played this land out in case I needed to fetch in response to my fetch. But I could just stay as opposition agent, so now I lost a surveil. So I messed that up twice. This Merktide could be 5-5, five, five, and I could have just surveilled. They're going to replay the, the thing here. Leyline. Is putting this land in my graveyard useful for any reason? It won't be there for long anyway because of the hearse, so no. Okay, so two missteps here. All right, this is attacking for seven. I'm going to take it this turn. Try to draw a fire ice to tap that and maybe tempo them out here. They have no cards. Pyrokinesis. Not currently useful. Wasteland, never useful. Okay, uh... I think I was actually supposed to block last turn because now they can crew the thing, kill the DRC. I'm going to leave myself dead on board intentionally and hope that they miss that line. But I'm going to push the four damage that I have here. But if they crew and then activate Stalker to minus two, minus two, the, the DRC, they win. Or they could read this as a removal or bounce spell. But then I would have attacked with both things. There's the crew. There's the activation. All right. Yep. They knew how that worked. Okay. So, confirmed that there are Leyline of the Voids in this deck, and that they are absolute hammers against what I'm trying to do. Narset could dig more for my answers to that sort of thing. I could cut another Eris. 
The problem, though, is that if I get Eris down, they lose. But that is a big if, given all their hand disruption and known graveyard hate. They've got Unlicensed Hearse and Leyline in here. Okay. I could bring in Meltdown for Unlicensed Hearse or just Force of Will, a little extra Force of Will action. I'm on the play where Days is better. I don't think I want Surgical in my deck. On the play, I'll have Days, Cage, all this other stuff available where on the draw it's Surgical or Bust if they go super fast. And we've seen that they are kind of the stompy opposition to agent build of this. Okay, I'm going to try it like this. Oh no, the no lander. Hate mulling against scam. Double beans, I'll keep this. And I'm going to bottom... I think it's it's either Dragon's Rage Channeler or Wasteland, and I think it's Wasteland. The reason to bottom Dragon's Rage Channeler is to guarantee the ability to cast Beanstalk, even if they Wasteland me. But I think I can live without that. I just need to fade Wasteland for one turn, and having the, the threat in play is big. And they mulled to six and did not have a ley line. Good start. If they do something like Dark Ritual Bowmaster here, that kills my DRC and makes my Up the Beanstalk a liability. Well, let's hope they, they chill at least a little bit. Or at least that they have like Oppo Agent, something I care less about. Fatal Push. That one's fine. 100%. Cool. I'm going to get to stick my engine. One of these is in. That's half the battle. Oh, yeah. Okay, Bowmaster, dangerous. Everything else, pretty exciting. Marsh Flats. Got a basic swamp. If they just main phase a Bowmaster here, that's going to be frustrating. Dothy Voidwalker is like annoying, but not a big deal. Ugh. Hey, when my opponents know what to do. Okay. And for those of you at home who would be incentivized to hold on to the Bowmaster and try to like snipe a brainstorm or something, if they held back this Bowmaster, I would have just played my land, played Beanstalk. They try to act in response, then I brainstorm under it and I get all that value. All right, I have to keep beaning here. I'm going to outmuscle this thing or I'm not, basically. This is too many lands. Can we chill? And I'm going to fetch Thundering Falls now before they're representing Opposition Agent. Unauthorized Exit. Uh, I'll put that on top. I can remove the Bowmaster for long enough to brainstorm and maybe come up for a real answer for it. Dark Ritual. Probably getting griefed here. Gix! Oh my goodness. The standard technology. Alright, so Gix is whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its control may pay one life and draw a card. So they can draw two cards here. Messed up. I did bring Narset in, just in case. I was ready for the Gix technology. Yeah, this is messed up. Trying to run them out of cards while I dance around this Bowmaster was my plan, and now they're just never going to run out of cards. I have to stabilize somehow. Stalactite Stalker. Okay, it looks like my plan to resolve a Brainstorm is going to get through here. I'm going to bounce the Bowmaster, surveil away this Scalding Tarn, cast this Brainstorm, and hope that Hyrokinesis Red Card are among them. My god. What a disaster. Okay, yep, not even a blue card to force the Bowmaster on the way back down. We are super freaking dead here. It's not even close. Three, four, five, six damage. Draw three cards coming. They're going to main phase the Bowmaster again because they know how to play magic. Or they might just not cast a spell at all and get me dead in two hits. Yeah, I wouldn't cast the Bowmaster here, actually, because I'm dead on board and you're drawing three cards a turn. And my only hope here is some kind of sweeper, which you have seen Pyrokinesis in my deck. And if I do that, then that's going to trigger Beanstalk twice. And you can Bowmaster in response to that. Yeah, Thoughtseize. Look, it sucks. It's bad. Pretty sure I have no outs here. Dark Ritual. And Shouldred. All right, yeah, you did it. Okay, uh, we had a really fun game one where all my engines were online and none of their stuff was happening. And then... The graveyard hate came in, and like I was saying, I pointed out in the deck tech that the deck is super soft to void and rest in peace effects, but I don't even think I realized how soft it actually is. Even Dragon's Raid Channeler doesn't really do anything, and there's only two answers to a turn zero ley line in the whole deck. 
I think that's less of a, a deck building weakness and more of a metagame prediction. Because Rest in Peace is not that popular right now. And the Leyline effects are in pretty specific types of decks. And the Leyline effect that gets played more is the creature that we have a bunch of answers to. Not the Leyline itself that we have way fewer answers to. And if you're in a metagame full of Leyline effects, you could build this deck differently. But I, I don't think this is a giant impugnment on the deck. It's just uh, that sucked in that particular situation. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw in round two. I'm going to keep my hand. It's got four different mana values in it. Just need to find the Eris. And I have two forces to help get me there. Only one that I could play on turn one. But like force, pitching force, ponder, dig my way out. It's a game plan. Let's go. Hopefully I can speak another Beanstalk into existence. I'd like to draw Beanstalk next turn or the turn after. Or find it off Ponder. Just, you know, a Beanstalk somewhere in the mix would be great. Opponent Mulda 6. A Plateau. I'm smelling some Painter, probably. Ugh. Alright. Pyrokinesis is such a good answer to this dummy. But if I miss on the red card, this could hurt a lot. I'm going to hold the Force Will for now. Alright, I found a Pyrokinesis. We're free. Red card unlocked. Can I get a Beanstalk before I start firing these things? Another Pyrokinesis. I do want Ponder. I guess I have enough lands. Yeah, I'll just put Ponder in my hand here. Pyrokinesis does kill both Goblin Welder and Painter Servant. Those are good numbers to put up. In for one with Welder. The old Goblin Lackey impression. All right, Ponder. Let's take another look. Wasteland. I am quite happy with that draw. And then there's a Brainstorm under it. That was a good turn. And I'm going to waste the Saga. I'm not going to try to get cute attacking the Plateau, and then maybe the Saga runs its course without doing anything. Like, nah. Saga's the problem here. I look like, is it Delver so far? Which is a lot of fun. Haven't revealed the Pyrokinesis or Beanstalk yet, or even a second color yet, or third color yet. But give me a two for one, or two for two, I guess. Like, Goblin Engineer, Painter Servant, they all die here. Light them up. Engineer happens. In Pyrokinesis, I can just go to my turn and do that after I brainstorm in case information changes. No rules about when you can cast that one. Hashtag built different. Phyrexian Dragon Engine in the graveyard. Okay. I'm going to start with the brainstorm. Okay, there's Eris. That's huge. Don't need basic island. And I don't think I need two Pyrokinesis. Or three Pyrokinesis. And I'm going to fetch for the Thundering Falls. Doing all this before I start killing stuff, so I have the information that I need. Mark Tide Regent. Eris costs 8 right now. Will cost 6 when I Pyrokinesis. If I force something, it'll cost 4. We're almost there. Mark Tide undoes a lot of that work, but is also just a big O. Okay, I think I like the big O. 1, 2, 3... Four, five. I can leave Pyrokinesis in the graveyard, brainstorm later, and then my total number doesn't change that much. Yeah. All right. Murktide saying on top. And then I'm going to Kinesis these jerks. Get them out. Suddenly revealed that I'm doing something different. Force of Will's ready. Dragon Engine takes five to unearth. Saga. Bummer. That's a good solo plan. I'm going to Force of Will this quickly. Uh, so. I have more fives in my deck than threes. So I'm actually going to force some negation pitching force of will. That also saves me a life and exiles this in case all those things are relevant. But primarily, it's a lot easier to cycle or in reveal than it is to find what my one other three drop in the deck. Okay, brainstorm first. Found a five and a blue card. Okay, if I put back Misty Rainforest Eris. One, two, three, four, five. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, there's still a brainstorm on the stack. All right. I thought I lost track, but one of them's still up here. One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay. I'm going to put back Misty Rainforest and Eris Roar of the Storm, which lets me play Murktide Regent now with Force Backup. And then if I pitch this Eris to Force, I have a two mana Eris next turn. And I'm just going to try to bash their head before this Urza Saga beats me. The bad news is if I don't force it well, I have no spells for multiple turns. Okay. Swords to Plowshares. Let's see if they have Pyroblast also. That would tap them out of making a construct. Eris is live though. We're cooking. But I am drawing a blank next turn and they can run their whole way through Urza Saga here. Casting two spells in a turn. I'm not even going to cast one. Just going to hope that these dummies get it done. Draws I'm worried about from them are Painter Servant, of course, because they can tutor Grindstone. If they tutor, if they play a Shadow Spear, and not every deck does in the main deck, if they have a Shadow Spear, they might be able to race. I really want to dodge a Painter for a little while, though. Okay, they're making Constructs. Probably means they don't have Painter. They did get Grindstone. They're setting up the win. So they could just go Land Painter here, if those are the two cards in their hand. That doesn't really change anything. Oh, Ancient Tomb. That's also a land. Famously, famously a land. Ancient Tomb. Okay. So, 4, 8, 9, 10. They can attack me for 10 next turn on board. Because the Shaman will make a treasure. And then they can grindstone me once. I can put them to 1 so they can't tap Ancient Tomb. That actually seems worth doing. Because they're on a 2 turn clock whether I attack with 1 creature or 2 here. But turning off Ancient Tomb means they won't have 5 mana to painter me. 1, 2, 3, 4. They'll have 4. Yeah, I'm just going to bash with both creatures. That also means I win if they draw a Pyroblast. I win if they... They would have to have come up with something specific like Ensnaring Bridge to win this game from here. Turns off Ancient Tomb. Turns off Pyroblast. And I'm at 6. Even if they draw an Artifact, I go to 4. Ray's Apprentice puts me to two because that's two artifacts and it's a blocker, but I still beat that. All right, I think I have most one card combinations in their deck beat here. Oh no! Phyrexian Dragon Engine. No, no, okay, it's fine. I forgot about Phyrexian Dragon Engine, but I turned off the Ancient Tomb, so they can't do that. That would have been six extra damage, though. Wow, that was spooky. Thought I blew it for a second, but turning off Ancient Tomb does a lot here. But yeah, Dragon Engine is four damage by itself, and then it's also an artifact for these two. If they have City of Traitors, they win here. They decline Fable's ability. What the hell? What one card wins the game here? Like They can't play and equip Shadow Spear, which doesn't save them anyway. Right, we're about to find out. Painter's Servant. Okay. That doesn't beat me. They still only have two mana to activate this thing. I go to four. Then I win. Yeah, they hit me for 12 here. Okay, cool. Looks like we dodged. Yeah, City of Traitors was a card they could have drawn that actually would have killed me with the Dragon Engine. Okay, they did have however many outs they play City of Traitors. That was their out there. Okay, tight match. Meltdowns. Hydroblast. I like Brazen Borrower. Grafticker's Cage and Surgical do have text against them, but I never really like trying to interact with their graveyard. I'd rather kill the things that enable their graveyard activations, like the welders. And they have a bunch of non-creatures that they're having to move back and forth. I think Force of Negation is probably bad. I'm going to shave an Eris. They're a Pyroblast deck, and they're going to bring in Graveyard Hate. Fire Ice kills their various goblins, so that has to stay in. Unauthorized Exit can buy me a turn versus Painter. Daze pretty bad on the draw against the Ancient Tomb deck. Pyrokinesis is awesome. Big fan of that. Yeah, the Murktides and Erises are, are tricky because this is a Pyroblast deck that's going to have Graveyard Hate, which means if I can even play these things, they're not particularly stable, but also this is how I win the game. Dragon's Ridge Chandler is not going to do it if I board out too many of my big win cons. I think I'm just going to lose another days here and do it like that. I could cut the last days for a Surgical, which is not something I generally enjoy doing, like I was just talking about. That's not really how I want to fight this matchup. But if I kill one Painter, then take Combo off the board, that's really big. Yeah, I'll try that. This hand is really bad. These are the three cards I identified as weak to their plan A and weak to their sideboard plan. DRC is not going to win a game on its own. 
no hate for a uh, painter combo of any kind. This one I'll keep. And I'm going to put, I think, it's either Wasteland or Tropical Island to the bottom. I want access to Basic Island in case they try to Blood Moon me. All right, I'm going to bottom a Wasteland. This gives me all my colors plus an, an out to a Basic if I need it, and I can still interact with the Wasteland kind of stuff. Goblin Welder. Once again, looking at a Pyrokinesis. Or I could just off it here. I think Hydroblast is going to have more game later on, though. I'll just play Scalding Tar and access my basic. The Hydroblast also answers a Blood Moon forever. If I just invest in basic land now, sit on this Hydroblast, that's a someday plan. Grindstone, that's in play now. Okay, they're in for one. I'm not going to fetch yet. I don't have to do that. Wasteland, take out the Urza Saga. This is just about patience here. Now they have red up, so if I Hydroblast, they could Pyroblast. I would like to just squeeze their ability to get an engine started, and then I'll win someday. Ugh. Bottoming that second Wasteland hurt. This is exactly what I was worried about when I did that. The Goblin Walder in for one. Now I have access to a different basic land, so I'm going to fetch the Thundering Falls. Force of Will. Is this a card I want? I guess so. I'll put that on top for now. And I'm going to fetch the basic now. I think I'm going to Ice Urza Saga, or Ice Mountain. No, because if they, they're an Ancient Tomb deck, I'm going to Ice the Urza Saga in the upkeep, so it doesn't know how to make Constructs this turn. Well, it knows how. It's just not able to tap to do it. Cool. All right, bought a turn there. And now that it's the sideboard, Meltdown's in here somewhere. I have Hammers for the matchup. Pitching Fire Ice did lose my red card for Pyrokinesis, though. Maybe I sh shouldn't have done that. But that did take at least three power off the board. It took three power off the board this turn, and then four power, five power, etc. as they play more cards. Yeah, I don't regret that. And immediately released from my, my concerns anyway. And because I did that, Pyrokinesis can exactly kill Construct plus Welder, as long as they do it before the tutor. Okay, you get a 3-3. Three, three. I'm going to kill your 1-1 one, one and your 3-3. Three, three. There's no artifacts to flip with Welder here. It's a clean 2 for 2. It's a 2 for 2 in the middle of a Resolving Urza Saga, though, which is worth a bunch of cards. But they're also down to land. I don't know. This math isn't calculable. Nobody could do it. Not even Frank Karsten. Goblin Engineer. I think I just Hydroblast this. Because there is stuff that works out of the graveyard if this resolves. Wasteland. Okay. I could take them off Metalcraft, I could take them off White, or I could save this for a future Urza Saga. Okay, I think I'm going to save it for a future Saga. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I could Brazen Borrow the token, I could just force this outright. Unfortunately, they are showing Pyroblast because I didn't waste the Great Furnace. Okay, I'm going to force this and prepare myself for a blowout. Yep, blown out. Guaranteed every time. I guess in this spot, I could have let this resolve to avoid the blowout, go to my turn, waste the Great Furnace, they float red with Mox Opal, pass priority, and then Brazen borrow the token, so at least they don't have that. That sucked. And now there's no reason to wasteland anything. Oh, I probably should have. Mystic Sanctuary. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, a, a decision that was difficult into a, a small misstep. And playing out the Wasteland there was bad for multiple reasons. First of all, I don't get to Mystic Sanctuary if I want to. And second of all, they know about Wasteland now, so they're less likely to aggressively dig for an Urza Saga or rely on that as a plan. Come on, deck. Oh my goodness. Pretty sure this deck has a low land count. Yeah, 19. This is built like a Delver deck. Just flooding out like crazy. And there's no Ponder or Brainstorm in my graveyard to really fix everything with. Pyrokinesis fixes everything, though. Never mind, I take it back. It doesn't fix the fact that I am just dead on board to a Painter Servant whenever they draw one. But it does kill both halves of Reflection. It doesn't get Pyroblasted. Mystic Sanctuary. Target Pyrokinesis. Draw for turn. Uh, I think leaving up Wasteland is good enough to give away the information for. Like, if they draw Painter, they're not playing around one card when I'm tapped out anyway. 
There was no force of will to bluff there. They were just kind of all in. Uh, Beanstalk into something that triggers Beanstalk is my, my best draw from here. And I need to fade any useful card from them in the meantime. Agatha Soul Cauldron. Perfect. Now we've got, we're playing against Graveyard Hate now. Kind of. Beanstalk. Ponder. All right. Ponder. Find a Beanstalk. They could just Pyroblast this if their hand's full of those. Ooh, okay. This is really good. Beanstalk. I could get Channeler going. Channeler sucks here. I'd rather Brainstorm. Don't shuffle. Go up the Beanstalk. I could tap Wasteland to do this. That's fine. I don't think they're going to play a land that immediately kills me. Brainstorm. Please find a Murktide or Eris here. Fire Ice. Not the best. All right. If I put Fire Ice on top and play Dragon's Rage Channeler, I can surveil away that land, ice something, draw another card. Okay, that, that was a pretty good turn. And they just haven't done anything in so long. I'm pretty sure they just drew Soul Cauldron this turn because they didn't do anything the turn before that. They're either saving Pyroblasts for things like Eris and Murktide, or their hand is just all lands, or like a redundant Mox Opal. I'm just trying to think what would even this deck be doing with this many cards in hand and not adding to the board. Okay, great. There it is. All right, they found it. It was a little late getting the action going. Okay, that took a thousand years. We flooded out really bad, and I didn't draw a single cyborg card. Got it. Now let's have it a game three. Narset is like an easy thing to get pyroblasted and doesn't really... And it stops Fable from doing chapter two. And yeah, Force of Will is so mid versus pyroblast decks. And sometimes it's really important to win a fight or at least start a fight. And I guess... My deck is deeply susceptible to Pyroblast at every level, so trying to overload them is actually a reasonable plan. Yeah, I'm not making any changes here. Just going back in. Snap Keep. This is the best hand I could ever ask for in any matchup forever. You know, Leyline of the Void. We're already off to a good start. Dragon's Rage Chandler. Oh, nice. Just basing Mountain nothing. That's what I want to see out of my opponent. If they had played a Welder there, I would have to think really hard about it. There's just a lot of things where that turn one could have been scarier than it is, but I take those all day. I am going to put this ponder on top because now I don't mind pitching the other ponder to Force of Will, and then I still have access to a ponder and a one drop for the graveyard, and I don't have to pitch Eris. Ancient Tomb, are we on a Fable game? Raya's Apprentice. I'm going to force that. Now that I have Beanstalk, I really like this velocity. Ooh, another Beanstalk, I'll put that on top. Draw it, force that. Because now I can Wasteland the Ancient Tomb, play another Beanstalk, and hopefully squeeze the shit out of them. And I have a red card for this Pyrokinesis if I don't find a different one. Murktide to the Graveyard. I'm Eris Gaming. Wasteland, take out this Ancient Tomb. When it comes together like this, this stuff looks crazy good. Another Basic Mountain. There's not much their deck could do versus a Pyrokinesis. I mean, they could Blood Moon me, but I could still just Pyrokinesis through the Blood Moon. And if it's Magus the Moon, I just beat that straight up while drawing two cards. But their interaction is Pyroblast or layering Welders on top of each other. From this board state, it would be really hard to combo kill me through a Pyrokinesis ever. There's that Painter. Let's see if I can find that one of Surgical Extraction I brought in the deck. With a hard lock. Yeah, I'm going to fetch my basic first just to keep my options open and not get Blood Mooned. That might have been a cowardly play, but I'm still into it. Been another Murktide. I've drawn one in between, and I've milled two now. Kinesis Hydroblast. Okay, so I could Kinesis the Welder, which would draw me two cards right now and get through this whole pile. Yeah, I could Kinesis plus Murktide and just draw four cards this turn. Yeah, I think Eris is going to have to take a little break here. And I'm going to pitch the Eris to the Kinesis. All right, all right. Bitch Eris. And I do want to draw those cards, so I'll stack the Surveil at the bottom. Another DRC. I'll put that on top because when I cast Murktide here, I'm going to draw that, and then that's a red card for Pyrokinesis in hand. All right, Murktide. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm just eating all the spells. I just pitched my Eris. I boarded one out. There's only two left. Let's just 
play the best game plan that's in front of me. That was so many cards. How I don't care about a Blood Moon. I'd probably still remove it, but I don't actually care about it. There's Pyroblast. Prepared for that possibility. That thing drew two cards on the way through. Now we're kind of breaking off a little bit. Tropical Island. I'm going to play Dragon's Rage Channeler before combat in case I need to Hydro Blast in combat and get some extra action. Attack. I am out of Pyrokinesis now because I played out my red card, but I think that's worth doing. One, two, three, four, five. Even with a soul land, they don't have six mana to pain or plus grindstone me all at once. Elegant parlor. Just a little selection for you. And kept it on top. Soul Cauldron. Can't interact with that. How about a ponder or brainstorm? That would be so insane right now. I accept that as an alternative, probably. Do I accept this as an alternative? It draws two cards immediately. It does. Alright, yeah, I'm just gonna fire it. It taps me out of Hydro Blast, which I'm a little worried about. But if I find any red card in these top four cards in my deck, in the Brainstorm, I'm mostly looking for red cards or Force Will now. All right, yeah, keep Pyrokinesis. Now I can't get combo killed. And I'm feeling pretty safe. Okay, that's great too, because it gave me Delirium, which they're going to want to turn off with the Soul Cauldron, which means they can't stop me from surgicaling all the Painters out of their deck. Or they just don't tap their cauldron and take an extra four damage. That's fine too. I accept. I'm going to move to my end step and see if they activate cauldron. Nope. They just uh, are not interested in that one. Okay. Uh, Eris is here. Mystic Sanctuary is kind of insane. I'm going to discard a ponder. And I do want to surgical the painters, but them leaving up Agatha Soul cauldron, if they cauldron their painter in response to me surgicaling it, then they still get to keep their painters. It's just countering the surgical. Okay, there's Welder. Ensnaring Bridge, okay. Yep, that's a card you can have. I don't have an answer to it at this moment. Got a lot of card selection to figure it out, though. Draw for turn. Eris currently costs a million. Six. I'm going to ponder first. Just have a thousand looks at a bounce spell or a meltdown here. Wasteland's not it. Eris is not it. Firekinesis, Force of Will. And these cards aren't bad, but they're not what I want. I'm going to shuffle them. Shuffled into a Thundering Falls. Air still costs six. I haven't changed that yet. Brainstorm. DRC to the graveyard. Up the Beanstalk to the graveyard. These aren't what I need. I'm trying to win the game right now. There's Meltdown. Okay. Put back Thundering Fall, Dragon's Rage Channeler, and Thundering Falls. And then Mystic Sanctuary targets, I guess, Brainstorm. Let's just pick something here. All right, they have decided to Soul Cauldron the Brainstorm. This was mostly just flavor text. My plan is Meltdown for three. Spell Lat. Now we win. This was a fun match. Disappointed I couldn't Meltdown for one more and draw two cards as well, but I'll just take the win. Welcome to TopDeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing Magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in-store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw for round number three. Hand seems completely fine. I'm in. This hand does not cast Dragon's Raid Channeler and up the Beanstalk in its current configuration. I will prioritize up the Beanstalk between those two cards, though. If I get the impression my opponent is not a Wasteland deck based on their turn one, I'll probably fetch Tropical Island and Ponder with it, looking for that red source. If they might be a Wasteland deck, I'll probably just play Misty with the plan of playing up the Beanstalk next turn without pondering. If I draw a land, I'll just try to curve out DRC into Beanstalk, though. Oh, looks like we got some maybe show-and-tell, maybe painter stuff going on over there. Whoever you are, I think my plan just became Wasteland, your stupid Ancient Tomb. If you're going to show me three mana on turn one, then not do anything with it, I'm coming for you. All right, didn't float or do anything with that. That's weird. I was thinking maybe they were setting up, like, Intuition, End Step, Untap, Show-and-Tell. 
Okay, the plan has changed a little bit here. This looks like 8 cast. All right, there's my green source. I'm just jamming a DRC now. And the next turn, I can DRC plus ponder and hopefully just apply a ton of pressure. Some kind of artifact deck. Could be painter, could be aggro. Oh no, a new card. Fumori Vault. Tap to add colorless. Three tap, discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library. X is the number of artifacts you control. Put one of those cards in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. So that's a colorless land that has a three plus tab. So functionally, four mana ability to impulse. That seems like a pretty cool role player in these sort of decks. If the matchup gets grindy, you definitely want to be able to keep cards flowing. Oh, and you discard a card. So four mana, discard a card. Replace that card with your top X where X is the artifacts you control. And it's just one. Okay. That seems unlikely to be activated this game. Or in this matchup in general. I guess the sideboard, it could get a little more interesting. Okay, DRC, Ponder. I have land, and this Ponder is going to be sorcery, so looking for creatures and instants here. I don't need another land. Uh, I'll actually just keep Force of Will. Deal. Force, Daze, Beanstalk. I am already holding a Force, but not for creatures. The Daze could just give me some kind of free interaction. And I'm already holding a Beanstalk, so I don't need Beanstalk for a while. And given how they've played this game, I think I'm just going to take the Daze now. And then I have Force Negation plus Daze this turn. And then I draw Force of Will next turn, play Beanstalk, and then Force Cantrips after that. If they play a creature this turn around Daze, I might have some scrambling to do. Right, Cycling Sojourner's Companion. Okay, so this is that uh, Synthesizer Vault card deck. Okay, this is starting to come together now. Shadow Spear is fine. Frogmite is fine. I mean, Frogmite holding Shadow Spear is like weirdly good against my deck, but also, whatever. Thought Monitor. Okay, I mean, they found a creature that beats Days, so maybe, maybe I blew it. Another Petal. Okay, the top card of my deck right now is a Beanstalk. So if I play up the Beanstalk, I could get an enchantment into the graveyard. I think chasing Delirium is better here than playing a super long game. I'll put the island on top. I do still have a land drop, and I can play this Daze, or uh, whatever this is, Ponder. Okay, uh, I could force this to get my Beanstalk through, or I could just accept this trade. Do I accept this trade, though? It sucks to lose force right before my beanstalk comes down. And in a spot where I'm not particularly happy with surveilling because I want the top cards in my deck. Yeah, okay, they picked a really good spot to bite over that. But I do want my beanstalk. Kind of the whole deck's built around it. Another ponder. Third dragon's rage channeler. Get rid of that. I want something bigger now. Get rid of volcanic island. Pyrokinesis. What's up? Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Do not shuffle my library. Attack for six. Now I have a big decision to make, which is Pyrokinesis now, where I'm pretty sure they don't have interaction, or else they might have kept fighting about the up the beanstalk. Or wait till they spend two mana to equip Shadow Spear. And I think I just go now. The coast looks pretty clear. Wasteland, I don't need that. This is going to be another land, I don't need that. I'd love a blue card here, especially if it's Force of Will. Nope. Okay. All right, well... We're back to stability, but we now know that they are this affinity synthesizer deck, and they could do a lot this turn. Okay, they're just activating the vault. Cool. This does look at one, two, three, four, five cards. It's a pretty big dig. Slightly better than impulse for four mana and a card instead of two mana to cast the card impulse. Though impulse would have cost you a card, so I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this card as a slot. And if the alternative there was just doing nothing, like if their hand is actually no action, then that was an insane turn and an insane value to get from your land. The question is, I guess, what land, what's the opportunity cost of this land? Like, would that be another blue source if it wasn't this? Or are we playing one less Ottawara? What's going on here? All right, yeah, they're just vaulting again. Another four mana into that, or three mana plus the land. Functionally four mana. Soul Guide Lantern. Uh, actually, I'm going to force this. That changes the race. 
I'm currently winning the race, and this would make me lose it. All right, cool. We did it. Okay. Cool stuff. We're playing against this Synthesizer Affinity deck. I want all of my Pyroblasts. Maybe Brazen Borrower. Definitely Meltdown. So Narset affects some of their dry engines. They have uh, that Warhammer card that cantrips when it comes into play and has Squad. I wish I knew the name of it, but not totally wrapped around the full details. But they have that as a dry engine. We saw a Thought Monitor. And then the, the Synthesizer is the card this deck is built around. It's a three mana blue artifact that when you, an artifact that costs three or more enters the battlefield, you make a construct. That gets got by force and pyroblast. Meltdown can clean up after it does a little bit of stuff. I think Daze is probably bad on the draw. I want up the Beanstalk. Fire Ice pitching to all my important pitchables is good for me. I think I shave an Eris and unauthorized exit. Does Shaving Exit and Bringing in Borrower even make any sense? Those are like the same card. Except one fuels my plan better. I do have to win somehow. I'm a little worried about that. But I do think these top-end bangers, if we expect Graveyard Hate, and we saw a main deck, Soul Guide Lantern, if these are my five outs, these are my first five ins, and then I think in order of relevance, it would be then Narset, then Force, then Brazen Borrower. All right, let me lock in the five that I know I want. I could. I'm thinking about this Force Negation, but we saw them play a bunch of creatures, and I just brought in three Pyroblasts. Yeah, maybe rather than going up a Force Negation, I should go down one and up a Narset. I'm going to try this. Okay, I don't know if this is a Chalice of the Void deck or not, but I'm going to keep this hand. It does a lot of things that I like, including Wasteland, their, their turn one Ancient Tomb Pass again. All right, cycling the Sojourner. This has Artifact Land Cycling. They got a Seat of the Synod. Played Darkseal Citadel and Haywire Might. Okay. Haywire Might can exile a Beanstalk if they can get green mana. Which may or may not be a thing they could do. Easily. I'm sure they have a Mox Opal or something kicking around. Lotus Petal. We've seen Lotus Petal, so they have that at least. I think I'm going to end step Brainstorm here. I have Lorien Revealed to mix it up if I need a Shuffle. And it turns out I do need a shuffle. Cycling Lorien. That would have just been really good if I drew Beanstalk there. In any of those three cards. I'm leaving up the Pyroblast so I could fight over the Synthesizer. So they are starting to get critical mass of random affinity garbage. Alright, there it is. Simulacrum Synthesizer. ETB Scry 2. Whenever another artifact with meta value 3 or greater enters the battlefield, make a construct. Counter target spell if it's blue. That one qualifies. I expect if they have Force, they'll Force back. Looks like they didn't. Meltdown would be pretty dope here. Beanstalk, dope here. Pyrokinesis, not that good. But I brainstorm and move things around. Okay, now we got some action. Put back, Tropical Island and Scalding Tarn. Play Misty Rainforest. Play Dragon's Rage Channeler. Play Ponder off of Tropical Island. A lot of action all of a sudden. Up the Beanstalk stays with me. Meltdown Forcible up the Beanstalk. Yes, please, all day. Okay, good spread. We have good things coming. And double force in hand. They're not going to get a simulacrum against me. I won't let them do it. Thought Monitor. That dies to Pyrokinesis, and most of the things it would draw die to Meltdown. If they attack, I will actually trade, because I want my Beanstalk. All right, they didn't attack. Didn't give me the option. All right, Beanstalk goes in. Meltdown's on top of my deck right now. I'll leave it there. If they Haywire Might this, it's going to cost them two cards. All right, looks like they have they have Metallic Rebuke in their hand, which I am willing to Force of Will to get this. And they're holding an answer for it, but it costs them two cards. Let's see if they just want to do it now. Yeah, they are just popping it off now. If I Pyrokinesis, I draw Meltdown. Okay, this was all part of the plan. I'm going to Pyrokinesis this thing right now while I still get a draw. And I'm going to stack it so I draw the Meltdown and actually get a Surveil. Ooh, Blue Blast. Okay. Eris on top of the library. Haywire Might goes. I draw the Eris. Eris costs four right now. I think I just Meltdown. Knock out two lands. There's another Meltdown in the deck and a Mystic Sanctuary. 
unauthorized exit. That makes Eris cost two. Let's go into the graveyard. Cool. All right. In for one after all that. Exciting turn. I can force if I need to, but I hope that they just kind of don't do anything and pass the turn here. Chalice of the Void on one. How much do I care about this card? I think very little. Not enough to force it compared to casting Eris. They're in for two. Race is on. Lorien revealed. That's a blue card. Now I have Eris with force backup. And we're in there. Attacking with the DRC. Because now I have a 4 4 prowess. It's going to be hard to cast two spells in a turn with Chalice in play, but hopefully 4 4 prowess just solos. Versus Saga. That could catch up. All right, well, have to force this. Those are the rules. Murktide Regent. I'll put that on top of my deck. The race is on. They don't know my creature can fly. Block. Oh, yeah, those words are on that. It's a dragon elemental. All right. We got a free lunch because we're playing a new card there, which also means we attack for an extra damage this turn. Good stuff all around. We might still die to this Urza Saga. No, I think, I think we got enough here. Yeah, 8, 12, 13. Exactly enough. All right. Not going to lose to this Urza Saga unless they stabilize somehow. F6. Who wins? Question mark. Mox Opal. One card left. If they channel an Ottawara, that means that the Saga won't make a construct. Oh, wait. No, the Saga... My DRC doesn't fly. Okay. I don't actually win here. Not immediately. And I didn't draw a spell that I could shove into the Chalice for Prowess Trigger either. Or a land that fetches for Mystic Sanctuary. Yeah, that actually was just enough to still be alive. Okay, 4-4, four, 5-5, four, five, five, six, six. Shadow Spear gets you up to 7. That's not enough. Aether Spell Bomb could remove one of my creatures. If they bounce any of my creatures, though, I can double spell and get a Prowess Dragon next turn. Okay, uh, they've determined that none of the things they could do to four actually beat this. All right, yeah, that was a pretty cool showcase. Let's keep going. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22nd, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxen. At 115 players, a place at a Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description and I will definitely see you there. I'm on the draw in round four. Cannot keep this hand. I will keep this hand, and I could bottom Eris or bottom a land. I'm going to bottom the Tropical Island, actually. Keeping a 10-drop in your opening hand is can be a little sus, but, I mean, our goal is to make it not a 10-drop, and also it pitches to all the things in my deck that pitch. It's fetching fearlessly into the potential stifle. I don't play around that card till they show it to me, ever. I have this tasty little DRC draw. I got multiples of these. Luda Delta's a little worrisome. They could just combo over the top here. Okay, I, we're almost certainly playing against Doomsday. Consider not really a legacy card unless you're doing something very specific with it. And Doomsday is the type of specificity that would play that card. Oh, Force Pitching Murktide Region. Interesting. So they're either a modern deck that queued up in the wrong spot and added Force of Will, or maybe it's like Mono Blue Delver. Okay, Mono Blue Delver is something that I played on the channel recently and is kind of defensible in the format. I don't even know that Mono Blue Delver would need to stoop to consider to actually play the game, though. Stifle will obliterate me here, but if they're forcing my first Dragon's Raid Channeler, I'm sending it on the second one. A Brainstorm. Yeah, I suspect this is actually some sort of clever Delver variant and not Doomsday at this point. Wasteland and Murktide region is too far. I would believe Doomsday might have a Murktide pivot. I don't believe that they're also playing Wasteland. Though anything's possible. Legacy's a wild place. Upkeep, Cycling War and Revealed. If this gets Basic Island, we're going to know everything we need to know. A tropical Island. Okay, what's going on over here? What is this deck? Is this like one of those 
all in Beanstalk Simic decks. Hooting Mandrills coming my way. Oh yeah, Hootie do. There it is. Okay, Hooting Mandrills is in play now. This does look like kind of an all in Beanstalk deck now. That would explain the consider because they have to support so many delve threats. Got it. A Ponder will be card type number three. Brainstorm will be card type number four. And I actually have a handful of selection already, and I would really like lands to cast my spells with. I could Kinesis these hoodies right now. But I could also do that next turn and enjoy my land drop in the meantime. I'll do that. But if this deck somehow plays like main deck endurance, they could blow me out in combat or surgical, but we don't play around stuff like that. I prioritize the land drop here because even though I don't plan on using this land yet, if they see a land drop, maybe they're less likely to dig for wasteland. And if they do have wasteland, I could pivot onto getting thundering falls. Okay, attack for three. And then I'm going to kinesis exiling fire ice. Just get rid of that thing. Fire ice. I'm going to put it in my graveyard because I'm going to shuffle and cast Merktide here anyway. And that just makes it bigger. This also gives me three card types. Oh no, the Force of Negation even. Don't even have the decency of leaving me the, the card type in, or the mana value in the graveyard. Ooh, suddenly a Stifle. All right, they're out of cards. I'm going to brainstorm now in case I find an answer to this Stifle. I did. Put the Force of Will on top. I found an answer to the Stifle and another land. This was a good spread all around. If I put back Murktide and Eris and then force the Stifle... Oh no, because I'm about to shuffle if I force. So now that I found my land, I could just let Stifle resolve, play my land, and move on. I'll have one, four, maybe five in my graveyard next turn. Okay, I'm going to put back Eris and Murktide. Or no, Force of Negation and Murktide. Eris and Murktide. And Stifle resolves. And I'll just play my land. Wasteland punishes this line. Anything else is okay. The Hoots are hooting in. And they didn't Wasteland me. I'm going to attack for three, then jam a Murktide, which should win the game on its own. And if I have to Force of Will to protect Murktide, that Force of Will can mill the Eris, and then I'm drawing real cards after that. Put you to nine. Can I make a large enough Murktide to be lethal without losing Delirium? I have multiple instants. Five plus three doesn't do it. So I do have to go one deeper. I'm going to exile all my instants. I lose Delirium, but instants are the easiest one to get back in the graveyard, especially if they fight over this, I get it immediately. I'm not going to force the Brainstorm, because if the answer to Murktide is on top of their deck and I force Brainstorm, then I still lose Murktide. But if they get set up here with something like Daze, all right, another brainstorm. They're they're looking hard. Okay, we're in there with the big one. If they scrun together like removal spell plus days, I'm not fighting over this beanstalk. It's too late for that shit. If they main deck submerge, I could be blown out here. I guess I was supposed to force to get delirium. <laughs> Whoops. I will just win over two turns instead of one. Yeah, I forgot that I just didn't have lethal. If I force that beanstalk, I win, even if the force doesn't resolve. That was a spew. These decks are hard. The any version of Fetchland, Brainstorm, Days, Force of Will, Tempo kind of deck, you're gonna make little mistakes. Like I, I play these decks all the time. I have a lot of experience with this, and I'm still finding like these little bleeds here and there that are costing me a lot. Not forcing a hoodies, that's not what's killing me. They should know right now if they're dead or not. And they're dead. Cool. Okay, we both seem to be, like, all in Beanstalk decks. I function a little better than they did without Beanstalk. Neither of us had one until it was too late. But we are probably very similar decks. And Murktide Regent is going to be the most important thing going on. Narset is going to be very important. Force Negation is tricky because it counters Beanstalk, which is an important Mirror Breaker, but basically nothing else of import. Pyrokinesis did kill Hoots. I'm going to shave an Eris. Fire Ice. And it's a 4 for Eris. It's red for Pyrokinesis, though the card itself doesn't line up very well. I guess if we get into a Murktide smash battle, 
tapping their Murktide might actually win a game. But I don't expect Fire Ice to actually kill any creature in their deck. They might be playing actual Delver. Okay, never mind. I'm back on it. I think I'm going to shave another Eris and a Pyrokinesis. I'm just bringing in all these awesome removal spells. I don't need to be all that clever about other stuff. Force of Will is good if I have Beanstalk and they don't. Or if I'm ahead and nobody has a Beanstalk. It's bad at all points where they have a Beanstalk, but it helps stop them from having one. Tricky card in the matchup. It helps me punch through Narset. I think I actually do want all Force of Wills in, even if I don't want the negations. On the draw, Daze is a little bit worse. I could go down to one Fire Ice for all the reasons that I was worried about it before. Okay, I'm going. This is basically a mirror match where I have a potent splash color and they don't. But that also makes me more susceptible to Wasteland than them. We'll see how it shakes out. I like this hand well enough. I don't like that it doesn't answer a Beanstalk, but I'm not going to mull to Force of Will in a Tempo Mirror. Opponent also kept seven. You know they're a Stifle deck, gotta watch out for that. Seems like they're also playing around Stifle, suddenly deciding to fetch in their second main phase. Okay, I drew Ponder, which would have been a nice card to cast, but I can Pyroblast to Stifle on future turns, which I can't do right now. Brainstorm. I could fetch to play around Stifle, but their deck also has Wastelands in it. And I think it's more likely they have four Wastelands than they have four Stifles. They might have four of each, and I'm just squeezed no matter what I do. But I'm pretty happy to see this Brainstorm. It means they're not beating this turn. Another basic island, okay. So they would need Lorien Revealed to shuffle this at this point. And sometimes you just rip the land. Don't even have to think about Stifle anymore. Submerge, Ponder, Force of Will. I will take this force because I believe this card is insane. Or I believe Beanstalk is insane. And this is the best thing I have to fight it. Thought Scour, targeting yourself. Okay. Got rid of a Wasteland and a Hoots. Okay, Thought Scour does clear Brainstorm as well. And they are some sort of Turbo Delve deck. Because but consider the Thought Scour. I'd be very surprised if they revealed a third color here. This is probably an almost mono blue deck with just some tropical islands for hooting mandrels. They were slamming a Murktide onto the stack. I think my best plan for this is just Pyroblast it on my turn. Because if I start a fight now, Daze is on. If I just go to my turn, I can blast it and I still have all the same weapons available to me. But they don't have Daze. Could even Brainstorm first. I'm going to do that. The Stifle shield is down. That's a lot of beans. They put back Mystic Sanctuary and... And here's that Fire Ice that I was shouting out as potentially a card that is not good. Pyrokinesis doesn't currently line up with anything that's going on. I'm actually going to put back Pyrokinesis. A Volcanic Island, play my land, Pyroblast Elver, or Murktide Regent, whatever this card is. Destroy your threat. Kind of wish I had stuck a Beanstalk first, but I don't want to let them untap and unlock Hydro Blast and Fluster Storms and Spell Pierces and all this nonsense. Of course, I'm going to pitch Ponder here because I think Fire Ice has a lot of play to it, and I have hopes that if they hit their land drop, Submerge becomes insane. Okay, they are winning the fight here, and now it's up to me to answer a Murktide in, in three turns. The best thing they could do for me is draw and play a Tropical Island, turn on my Submerge. Okay, drawing for turn. Another land is good, because now if I fetch and they stifle, I can just play my other land, and it's fine. A Tropical Island. Lay out my land in case they have Spell Pierce. Up the Beanstalk. Start digging. Narset. Fetch again. Haven't changed the clock yet. This Beanstalk does turn on days, but... Let's get Days out of there if they have it, and I'm happy to be in stock if they don't. Kinesis. That could draw two cards at minimum. And I'm now one land away from just casting Submerge, but holy smokes, I wish they played a Tropical Island for me. It becomes risky to lose another life. A fetch land, a force of will, is actually a turn off the clock at this point. Brazen Borrower, let's go. Okay, how do I want to play this? Probably in their upkeep. That seems like the right time to do that. And I still have another shot here. If they do win this fight, Betty theft this thing. I could have even led on ice. 
and see if they fight over just the tempo play and then get them with the actual removal spell afterwards. Commandeer. Okay, so this will bounce my up the beanstalk. I'll respond with ice. Ice the Merc Tide. Okay. I could Pyrokinesis now to draw two cards, but if they want to bounce my beanstalk on a turn where I'm not dead, that's another card I get to draw. Crazy that this goes on an adventure for them now. Hate that. Play a Tropical Island. Get a Tropical Island. Please get a Tropical Island. Reveal it, reveal it, reveal it, reveal it. No! I think they know about Submerge. At least suspect that it might exist. Okay, up the beanstalk. That's where I want to go. We did it, Reddit. Destroy target blue permanent. Snapping it off right now. Before they can hard cast force and negation or anything. A spell pierce, the fluster storm, all that stuff will get me next turn. Same as it gets me this turn. But untapping does give them at least the out of force and negation on the hard cast. They pitched Merktide and Hydroblast to play that commandeer last turn, by the way. Brazen B. I think I just like to daze that. We're in a spot where that's good. Now I feel insanely stable. Especially with this Narset follow-up. And another Daze, so they can't even fight over Narset. Let's have a look. Another Beanstalk? Yeah, keep them coming. I'm not worried about decking. Which is the only reason I would ever decline a Beanstalk. I'm under no pressure on board. I love having cards in my hand. Hand has multiple 5 plus drops in it. We just locked out some large percentage of their deck. Alright, another chance at Tropical Island. And it's on. Let's go. Alright. Up the Beanstalk of your own. That's... Fine, because I have Narset. It at least stops being triggers on their own turn, and on my turn they only get one each. Narset's so good in Bean Mirrors. She's come way back up in my estimation. She was out for a while in the Legacy format. She's back, as far as I'm concerned. Wow, shot through the gut. Okay, well, I'm going to force that. As embarrassing as that is, we take our medicine when it is prescribed. Okay, I draw a bunch of cards. Gut shots countered. Pyroblast to the grip. All right, now I'm just looking for any way to win the game. Up the beanstalk, let's go. Murktide, Eris. There's an exit. And a ponder. There's a Murktide. Don't shuffle. Volcanic Island. I did exile all my one drops. Those are the easiest ones to replace in case I find Eris. Wasteland, which I don't even want to use because it turns off my submerge. I'm just going to go to clean up and discard... Probably Ponder, actually. And my hand is just already good. Already unbeatable. Don't need a Ponder anymore. That's the phase of the game we're at. Mystic Sanctuary. Targeting what? A shot to clear Narset, and three turns from now you could start playing the game. All right, Lorien revealed. That's going to be disappointing. Okay, so they're dead. I attack for eight. They draw a card that doesn't do anything, then I attack for eight again. Done. Wait, it's my opportunity. Okay, I don't need to do this at all, but I want to make at least one Prowess Dragon before this league is over. Here we go. Beanstalk is my second spell. No danger of decking here. Let's go, Prowess Dragons. I'm just showing off at this point. And because I played Mystic Sanctuary, I could even Wasteland it, which I think is actually less funny than just letting them draw the card that they chose to put there on purpose that doesn't win the game. We got the GGs. Okay, that was fun. Basically, like I said, it's a very close to a mirror match where I have an insane splash color and they don't. On to the final round. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This magic player owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. On the play in the final round, I believe I'm 3 1 if I've been paying attention. Positive record, locked 4 1 on the line. Hands great, Dragon's Raid Channeler to start, double force if I need to be alive. I'd prefer a Beanstalk or a Ponder somewhere in the mix here to keep things moving, but I have faith. Bono went to 5. Are we combo? Are we stompy? Are we unlucky in blue mirrors? To be determined. City of Traitors. Okay, looks like some stompy. It is a tempting thought to force this chrome mox. Blood Moon. All right, force. What are my options here? So 
I could just cycle Lorien Reveal to get basic island, still play all my blue and red cards. My only green cards are the Beanstalks. I can't get, play Murktide Regent though, okay. Yeah, that actually sucks. Okay, Force of Negation, Exiling Lorien Reveal. I have hopes to actually just cast this Murktide and win the game with it, which is why I haven't fired it off just yet. Ooh, Fire Ice is interesting. I'm actually going to keep that on top. Because it gives me multiple options. I could ice their red source. Or I could fire a goblin rabble master. Or I could just pitch it to force. I think I'm just going to leave the fire ice in my hand. I would love to get a clean exchange with a, a rabble master or something like that. Sick. Play to it. Fire that. Get another surveil. Bin dragon's rage channeler. I'm just trying to get to murktide here. I am one card short of Murktide, but now I have Force Blue card still, and that will definitely get me into Murktide. They got two cards left in the hand, plus the one they're about to draw. Broadside, boom be dooms I really hate these guys, so I'll counter them. Uh, basic Island into the graveyard. I don't need that anymore. A Brainstorm could hit a land and make for a bigger Murktide, or I could just slam this Murktide into play and... Worry about brainstorming next turn. I think I'm going to do that. Big schmirkies. I'm just making it as big as I can make it. I don't have delirium anyway. I can replace an instant. Lands are the easiest one to replace. All right, another broadside. That is the card in their deck that could kill a Murktide region sometimes. They didn't want to sack their Chrome Mox to kill my Dragon's Raid Channeler, which makes perfect sense to me. Any red card I find here... Ooh, okay, so here's a force. If I keep this and there's any blue card in the next two, then any blue card or any red card is good enough for me. Yeah, I'm not going to bid that force. All right, it's a blue and a red card. Perfect. Would I rather hold up Force of Will or Pyrokinesis is the question. Yeah, the problem is the other two cards are bad. Drawing through Eris and Mystic Sanctuary or uh, Force and Mystic Sanctuary, not that good. I think I'm going to put back Force of Will and Mystic Sanctuary with the plan to Pyrokinesis, whatever creatures are in play, and then I DRC away the Mystic Sanctuary, draw the Force, which is blank for a turn, but it gives me blue cards to be alive for the turn after. But they're dead the turn after. Yeah, I don't know. And maybe they just don't cast anything, and I end up with everything I need chilling here to survive the last turn. Fury. Ooh. Okay, so Fury... This is three, seven. This actually does kill everything. Oh, I should have kept the force of will. Wow, that sucks. They found the line. The pyrokinesis is an instant. It mills a land. Where are they putting the damage and how much is it going to be? Can I trick them into giving me delirium? No, because I already have a creature there. Wow, that sucks a lot. Oh, wait, I could just kill the broadside before it can boast. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Three, four, five, six, seven. But... Fury plus Chrome Mox still just kills me, but at least they don't have a red source anymore. Okay. Oh, th that was actually an insane card to have. I, I should have kept Force of Will, not the Pyrokinesis. That was greedy as hell. Hey, get rid of Mystic Sanctuary. Yep. They lose their red source, which is the only one they've played the whole game on so far. And then... Oh, why did I think this dealt three? This deals two. Okay, no, no, we're fine. We're fine. 100% fine. I thought I was going to lose my whole board there, but I did not. And by 100% fine, I mean still have a 1-1 one, one in play. Okay, they need to come up with a red source and a card to cast, and it has to be good enough to win the game on its own. Unfortunately, their deck is full of things that meet that description. A land. This could get the, the Thunderland. I should probably just do that now. What am I looking for for Delirium? A sorcery? That's a sorcery, but it's also a really good card to just have all right never mind i'm keeping that on top at worst it's force fodder at best it's ponder uh oh oh no did they find something that wins the game on its own in the last window to do it no okay i still have access to force blue card and my red spells and there is a basic island in here somewhere and they now have one land to play the game on for the rest of their seven life. Found another land. Three is the scary number where things start getting potentially treacherous. There is one more or two more dragons or channelers in my deck also that I could play. Oh no, they hit the three. Come on, chill. Stop. 
to stop doing stuff. They tap mana, then untapped it. I wonder if they have a four drop and forgot the City of Traders is off, or what that was actually about. I, I don't care about Chalice anymore until I find Basic Island, which, if I find Basic Island off of Lorien Revealed, I get Delirium anyway. Yeah, Lorien Revealed, I think, is actually my best draw in the deck. Okay, four mana, one card in their hand, four life. Lorien Revealed. All right, play my land. Oh, my basic island's in exile. I pitched that to Merc Tide. All right, yeah, Lorien Revealed's my best card. That's the way I could get Delirium through this Blood Moon. Chalice on two. Okay, that doesn't matter. I don't have anything that fits that description. Oh, well, there's one. Couldn't cast it anyway. Okay, they got... They got a runner runner me here because I have a force to survive one thing. As horrible as it is, this card is good enough to beat me, which means I have to engage with it here. Brainstorm into the graveyard. I'm looking for Lorien revealed. That's my my surefire out to win here. Unauthorized exit. There's only one Lorien revealed in the deck. It's it's right now. Like if they have another thing that beats Dragon's Ray Channeler, I'm gonna lose this. Fingers crossed. Wow. Yikes, that was wild. All right, Hydro Blast coming in. Brazen Borrower coming in. Meltdown does clear out Chrome Moxes and Chalices. I, I think that's good enough here. Force of Negation might be necessary if they're on the dedicated Moon Strat. Pyrokinesis is awesome. And these decks play a lot of Graveyard Hate. Eris is going to chill. Daze is pretty bad on the draw against them. I mean, it's like the best card or the worst card, and there's no other mode for it, which is pretty typical of days, actually, in all matchups. I think I'm going to pass on the seventh force. It, the six I have are enough, and I'll do it like this. After have to mulligan this one. Bummer. Excellent with a land. Okay, uh, we could just lose on turn one here. I am going to take that risk. Uh, this hand is actually really good against Blood Moon. And pretty bad against Chalice of the Void. Basic Mountain, go. Okay, I think I actually have to pass on playing DRC for a turn to make sure my basic island is under control. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, that happens. And I think this is an end step brainstorm just for velocity's sake. Did hit the force, which would have been nice versus the Fable, but okay. Can't have everything in the world. Put back... Thundering Falls and Mr. Rainforest. I'm just going to draw through both of these. Or no, I have to fetch away the Thundering Falls. That's fine. Yeah, that, that works. I'm just going to hold up Fire and interact with the Goblin if I need to. Discarded two lands. In combat, I'm going to fire the Goblin. Your services are no longer required. You're fired. I'm almost at Merktide. Okay, now I have to decide... Uh, I'm going to let this resolve. That locks out Merktide until I find a Hydro Blast, which I do play multiple copies of, but I can cycle Lorien Revealed for Tropical Island and play two DRCs here. My brain, my graveyard is missing a creature among card types or an enchantment. Okay, Fable flips. I'm in the kind of Force of Will anything and try to get Delirium mode here. Yeah, Chalice is, is worth forcing, because that locks out Hydro Blast. Pyrokinesis, I wish. Don't have a red card to go with it, or being in play. Here we go, Delirium. Race is on. If they just have a Fury next turn, they win. Hydro Blast. Wow! Okay. Uh, I'm just going to hold this Hydro Blast and beat them to death with my DRCs. I could Blast the Blood Moon, get Beanstalk into play, but that's not what this game's really about anymore. I want to counter a Fury that would wipe my board. Especially if they put two cards into it like this. Counter target spell if it's red. That one, please. If they pyroblast me back, they're going to win. But that's, this was a really good sequence for me. Meltdown doesn't matter. Okay, what's left over there? Rabble Master. This is a lot of damage. They could copy this. All right, yeah, now the race is really on. Okay. I'm going to need a little more help here. That's not it. All right, yeah, we're going to... I haven't done the math, but I assume I'm dead here. Double Rabble Master with double trigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. They were just one spell too far here. One piece too many. It ran pretty good, though. Can't complain. This was on the draw, keeping a hand that couldn't interact with their 
primary lock pieces. <laughs> Just another Rabble Master. Yeah, yeah. Dead. All right, game three. I guess be on the play. Confirmed Magus the Moon in here on top of Blood Moon. Merktide's really interesting because it's easier to play than Eris because it requires less. But if they moon me, I can still Eris, but I can't Merktide. I'm actually going to switch that three, three Eris to Merktide rather than the other way around. Daces are a little better on the play, but I don't know where I'd put them, so I'm just not going to mess around with it. I still think Pyrokinesis is excellent. Unauthorized Exit is good. I could shave a Beanstalk because the matchup's so fast. Maybe I'm supposed to do that. We'll never know now. I've already submitted my deck. Hands great. Bunch of interaction and a turn one threat. Channeler. Don't even have to worry about turn one Blood Moon because I'm holding the basic. City of Traitors. Chrome Mox. Always tempting to force it. But so bad if it's so bad if you bet wrong. Blood Moon. All right. I can answer that. Island and attack. And I drew an Eris which is a card that is technically castable under this Blood Moon. I'm ready for a creature here. Chalice is annoying. I guess Chalice also doesn't affect my hand at this time. All right, yeah, that resolves. I could end step bounce the Blood Moon, but I'd rather do that on a turn where I know it's going to do something. Like if I'm holding Beanstalk and I can get one turn without Blood Moon and play to drop Beanstalk, then get back to gaming. That's exciting. All right, broadside Bombardiers, this just dies. Fire, Surveil 1, Brainstorm, can go to the graveyard because I can't cast it. Gives me a type for Eris, or a number for Eris. Whatever it is Eris cares about, it does it. Currently costs 6, though, just a little short. This is going to be an awesome turn to unauthorize exit, because I can exit the Blood Moon, force whatever they play with Force of Will, exit the Blood Moon, fetch, get green, play Eris, and then... Cool stuff is happening. Okay, well, now I'm just going to exit the Chalice. This doesn't actually change my plant. I just have to exit something. Exiting the Chalice might actually be better. Okay, Bin Thundering Falls. Bin Volcanic Island. Go to my turn. Four mana for, for Big Poppy here. Don't have a follow-up spell, unfortunately. I think the Dragon would win the game on the spot, but I also think we're really far ahead right now. Okay, I am going to Force of Will this. I think fighting these sort of fights is good enough. Ponder. Ponder is awkward. Uh, I'm going to put it in the graveyard. If they don't replay the Chalice, the Ponder is insane here. But I expect they're going to replay the Chalice, and I'd rather have a red card for Pyrokinesis somewhere along the line. Yeah, there's the Chalice. They got one card left. And there's that red card. Bang. I would rather hold this back for Pyrokinesis. This is card type number four for Delirium. Fury. Good thing I don't care about that. Yeah, they have to put all four on Eris, and then I can Pyrokinesis, get a Prowess Trigger. They have to think about the Prowess Trigger. Like, can they actually beat the... But they can't beat this card anyway, so they just have to take their medicine on it. Boom. That was crazy good. Beanstalk gets me Delirium. Prowess Trigger stuffs your whole play. And now they're dead in two hits. I got a Flying... Bunch of Maniacs versus their top of their deck. I like my position. Never rule out Red Prison. But if it's not Ensnaring Bridge or some crazy thing, there's not a lot of single cards here that completely win it for them. And it's not that one. GG. This is fun, because I'm going to pretend that this Eris was the one that I boarded in. And I don't even know if it was. But if this was Merktide Regent, I think we don't win this game. So that last-minute sideboard adjustment, just keep... Keep adjusting your plan as you understand things better. A 4 and one result. Pretty strong. Things that I like a lot about this deck are... Once you get the Beanstalks rolling, this is one of the better Beanstalk decks that there is. At least in terms of sheer card draw in a single turn because you have so many free spells. Pyrokinesis in the main deck in large numbers is really good against a lot of decks. That came up a bunch of times. It's surprisingly awesome. It's not a card most decks can support, and when we cast it in this deck and didn't have a Beanstalk, or we didn't have like a Prowess Trigger or a Delir uh, Delirium Surveil Trigger, or just, if we just cast it on rate, it kind of sucks. But it's still not completely embarrassing. And when we do have Beanstalk, it's insane. 
curving dragon's rage channeler and up the beanstalk is chef's kiss just the best magic there is things i don't like about this deck it is a deck that is a lot worse without beanstalk in play and i think ever since beanstalk came out and people were like we could put yabamaya and submerge in all our decks now and just have a crazy removal draw engine and people quickly realize that that's not good because beanstalk is only a four of you're 40% to have one in an opening hand. Having Brainstorm Ponder, like you can dig. You're more likely to have it by turn two, but then it has to resolve, then it has to stay in play, or else all your cards are so embarrassing. And I think that this deck is kind of in that pocket. The Pyrokinesis and all these forces do give you a lot of room to buy time until you find a Beanstalk. Merktide turns the corner really fast, as it's known to do. But I, I do think this is a deck that's a little too far on the needs beanstalk to really do what it wants scale. This deck is also ice cold to Ley Line of the Void or Rest in Peace. You have like two bounce spells in the 75, and none of your threats play through it. There's no pivot. There's no, not even like Delver of Secrets or something that could function without your graveyard going. Everything serves the purpose of Eris here. And Eris, while powerful, and not actually that hard to set up, I don't know that this is better than just playing for Merktide Regents and some Delver of Secrets. Like, if, if we're talking about this deck strictly in terms of winning the most matches, you should drop, probably just play Team or Delver. Or is it Delver? If we're talking about this deck in terms of doing something awesome and creative while still being highly competitive, yeah. A++ on that, because th this is a really sweet way to use this new card. And this, I hate to say it, now getting kind of old card, even though it's just two sets ago. But it just so quickly ingrained itself, it feels like we've had it for 10 years. But fun exploration, fun successful exploration of a new card in a cool space. A+, plus. as far as actually registering this if you want to win Eternal Weekend. I don't know, C-. minus. Either way, successful league, very cool deck. It's cool that it's out there. Toboggan, thanks for asking me to play it. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.